All right. In this module, we're going to talk more specifically about the objective lens, uh, as well as touch on the eyepiece. So as I mentioned before, the objective is really the most critical, if not top two critical components in the light microscope. It gives us that magnified image. So as I kind of touched on before, the magnification total is equal to the product of the objective and the ocular OC, right? Or the eyepiece, right? So typically the eyepiece is fixed at 10x magnification, right? And so really the objective is what gives us the total uh, magnification and de determines resolution. All right, so the numerical aperture in A, as we've talked about, uh, for an objective uh, lens is uh, varies from 0.16 all the way up to 1.40. Right? And the takeaway from this and how we can relate this to magnification is the higher uh, NA we have results in a higher magnification M. So that's kind of the, the takeaway there. Um, also, we have two types of lenses. Um, we have what's called a dry lens. And this is where we just have uh, medium, the medium, so the, the, the fluid uh, between the lens and specimen, and this is air, right? So it's dry because it's air. And so that can have a uh, numerical aperture of up to 0.95, right? So you can see that this doesn't quite reach one, yet I said that it can vary up to 1.4. So that means that if we use uh, oil, lens, so that's where we have oil between the lens and the specimen, then we can get uh, an NA of up to 1.4 max. So that's kind of the max, that's where we get the upper maximum. And so, you know, I mentioned this before, but objectives um, are uh, a barrel and they have a series of lenses within them. And so we're talking about the, the medium between the lenses and also the specimen. Uh, in that barrel. And so uh, in the best cases, we have oil uh, and then air only gets us up so far in terms of the uh, numerical object, uh, numerical aperture in A. All right, now let's talk about some different types of objective lenses and we'll go in order of lowest to highest cost. So I'll put little dollar signs to indicate relative cost. All right, so one dollar sign we're talking about uh, a chromat. So a chromat. Uh, so in this type of objective lens, uh, what defines it is going to be the types of corrections for those various aberrations we have. And so this corrects for chromatic aberration, and I'll abbreviate that here. And from the name a uh, chromat, you might get that, that it's uh, chromatic aberration. And it does that for two wavelengths. And that's red and blue. Right. So this type requires a specific type of, uh, of wavelength, and that is green illumination. And that's for black and white photography. 
So it corrects for chromic, uh, chromatic sorry, aberrations in two wavelengths, red and blue, and it requires uh, green illumination. So that's the first one. That's the cheapest. Um, obviously, there's there's an additional cost uh, potentially when you have to have green uh, illumination. All right. So that's number one, a chromat. So now going up in cost. So I'll put two dollar signs. This is semi a chromat. So this can also be called fluorite. So it goes by a couple different names. So this has improved uh, correction. It also has larger values of numerical aperture. And then this leads to brighter images and higher resolution. All right. So uh, oftentimes, and we're going to look at this more in more detail in the next section, uh, but these uh, various uh, lenses, you can find out information by looking at them. There's a lot of information sort of coded on there. And so abbreviations for this type are often FL for fluorite or FLUOR for fluorite or NeoFluor. So basically, some variation that signifies fluorite is telling you we have a semi-achromat type of lens and kind of in the middle range here. All right, so let's look at the last one that we're going to talk about. So this is our $3 sign. Uh, objective lens, so it's the most expensive. And this is an Apo Chromat. All right, so the sort of improvements, the, the what defines it, we have almost completely corrected for the chromic, Chromatic, sorry, chromatic aberration. It also corrects spherical aberration, and I'm abbreviating that again uh, for two colors, and this is green and blue. It has the highest numerical aperture of the three. And the reason it can have this is it can it contains 12 or more components inside the barrel. So it's the most complex. and that sorry for that most expensive <laughs> so obviously we get a lot here because we basically correct for chromatic aberration and it also corrects for spherical it has a high numerical aperture but it also contains this many components so it's complex right so if something happens uh, then fixing it would be an issue, and it's also the most expensive because of all because of all those components. So again, we often have abbreviations for these if you're looking at the lens itself, and that's Apo on this uh, lens. So Apo for Apo Chromat. Right. All right. So about the abbreviations, we saw here it's 
APO for the Apo Chromat. And then if we go back, I gave you the abbreviations for semi Apple, uh, sem, semi achromat, and that was basically uh, derivatives of fluorite. Uh, and you'll notice I didn't have any for achromat. So that basically tells me if I don't have an abbreviation for one of these, then it's going to be this achromat. So that tells us a little bit more about the uh, abbreviations for these three. All right, so now let's look at how to identify objective lenses based on some of the markings that appear on the barrel. So I've got a picture here from uh, a second dairy resource that you can see. Um, there's also a similar figure in our textbook, 1.16, that you can take a look at and compare. But I just want to go through uh, some of the different things that the uh, lens itself can show us. So this is just a picture of a typical lens, objective lens you might see, um, and all the different kind of information you can get from it. So just to kind of uh, go over some of this, so obviously here at the top, this is the screw that thread, this is how it would go into the microscope, so you probably don't see this. Um, this is the end of the lens, so this is where the, you know, you can see the end with the glass. Uh, this is a sample with a, a, a cover slide, um, so yours may look differently, but that's what uh, uh, we're kind of looking at here. Uh, so the first thing you might notice is the uh, brand name. Uh, this is Olympus. There is Nikon. There's a, a few different uh, brands out there that you might find. Um, so obviously you have the, the brand uh, of the instrument, uh, which can be useful to, uh, to know. Uh, usually after that, you'll see the objective type, so what type we have. Um, you, you'll remember from just a second ago, we went over some of the different abbreviations for the main types of objective lenses, and APO here meant that we had an, um, an APO chromat, a chromat lens. Uh, but also, you'll also notice the there's the U and the uh, PLAN, so the PLAN uh, kind of refers to plane. Uh, it refers to a, a lens that has correction for curvature of field. Uh, so this is an apochromatic lens, but additionally it, it corrects for curvature of field, which is another one of those distortions that we saw. So it tries to generate a flat field of image. Um, also, uh, underneath that, you'll notice that you'll have uh, a number with X, right? So that's the magnification. So this is a 100X uh, microscope, or sorry, 100X um, uh, objective. And then usually uh, a dash, and then it also has the numerical aperture, so 1.35, so a really high numerical aperture. And in this case, it actually tells you that it has uh, an oil uh, type of media inside the lens. All right, so uh, we've got that. Uh, it's telling us about what type it has. Um, the uh, below that, we have this uh, this infinity sign, which give which tells us that it's an infinity corrected uh, uh, optical system. Uh, in this, you'll see this quite a bit. Um, uh, again, after a dash, that number here uh, is referring to the cover glass thickness in millimeters. So that tells us um, how thick that cover glass should be. Um, if you see this type of um, uh, range of different values with arrows, uh, that refers to the aperture adjustment. That means we can actually adjust that value from 1.35 to, uh, to others. Um, others may be fixed uh, and not have that adjustment level, but this one uh, can. Uh, below that, um, you'll have these uh, color bands. And so we have two colors here, and those refer to different things. The first one refers to the magnification in this case. And so if I, in this chart you, you can use, uh, it gives you a lot of information. So if you look at um, the, 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 code, the different codes here, you'll see that um, uh, for white, so if we look over here for a code white, because that's what we have here, uh, that you'll see that the, this tells us it's a magnification of 100. So even though I do, even if I don't have this up here or if you miss it, you should still be, still be able to work it out from the code there. 
Secondly, the second band here is about the, the, the immersion media, what's inside the lens. Um, and so that one is black. So if we don't go down here to immersion uh, media, we have an options of oil, water, glycerin, or water, oil, water, and glycerin. Uh, since this is a black band, this means it's oil. All right, so these bands give you a lot of uh, information uh, in this case. Um, additionally, the, the distance between the end of the lens and the top of your specimen or the cover slide is known as the working distance. So, um, so this is a typical lens that you might see. Um, that I will say that there are a lot of other codes and so forth that you may run into. And so just because you don't see them here doesn't mean that they uh, you won't see some other uh, codes. Just for an example, um, you may see DIC uh, listed on the lens somewhere. That refers to the type of contrast, um, differential uh, interface contrast. This is a specific type of light microscope, and so that tells you that this lens is, is useful for that mode. Um, you could also see PH or PHACO, uh, which refers to phase contrast microscopy, so it's a basically an application for that type. Uh, so you might see that uh, in it as well. So there's going to be a lot of information. So um, one thing I did is in the course notes, um, you'll be able to, uh, I put a link in there uh, for a website from Nikon, which is a common uh, lens uh, manufacturer. Uh, and in that, you can find what's called Microscopy U. And there's a lot of good resources related to the abbreviations uh, that you can see. So that link is in the lecture notes. So if you ever see another lens out there and it doesn't have some of the ones that we talked about or some of the other abbreviations that you might see in your book, uh, definitely go to that uh, resource and you should be able to find uh, a lot more abbreviations and applications and what those, um, what those are. So that just kind of uh, gives you an introduction to some of these markings that you're gonna see on objective lenses. All right, so now I have a quiz question for you and it's related to the image I'm showing you here. So I've blocked off all of the, um, the information, uh, the detailed information. So what I want you to do is taking a look at the, the barrel markings on this lens, Give me as much information as you can possible about this lens based on what all of this is telling you. So do that uh, in the quiz, and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about objective lenses. All right, before we move on, let's look at a couple last things related to the lens. So I want to look at sort of the practical aspects here of how do we improve resolution? What are the steps we can take? And then we'll also look at how we improve depth of field. All right, so improving resolution. So some of these things we've already talked about, but I just want to put them all in one place as kind of a refresher. Uh, so what we can do here to improve resolution is we can use a high numerical aperture, objective lens. All right, we can do that. We just talked about those. We can use a high magnification. So improving the magnification will do the same thing. We can use uh, this lot. This next one is about changing the light source. So we can use the shortest wavelength. That will give us uh, improved resolution. Um, other things uh, that are kind of maintenance wise, we can uh, keep the light source, the light system, so the illumination system properly centered. Uh, we can use oil immersion lenses. So these go along with the higher NA as well. Um, we can adjust the field diaphragm for 
max contrast and the aperture diaphragm for max resolution and contrast. And then lastly, we can adjust brightness. So that will, uh, by adjusting brightness, we can get the best resolution. All right, so those are all the things that we can do to give us the best or to improve resolution. So let's look at improving depth of field. And I'll just abbreviate it D sub F. And so one thing that we're going to see here is that basically this, lin, uh, this list that we're going to come up with is basically the opposite of what we talked about in the last one for improving resolution. So we want to reduce numerical aperture and all the things that, that go along with it. And uh, we can do this by closing the aperture diaphragm. Um, use objective lenses with lower NA, lower numerical aperture. Same thing, we can lower resolution. And then we can use the longest wavelength. So basically, all the things to kind of uh, uh, do the opposite for resolution. So that's how we can improve depth of field.